So we are at the UK Games Expo and I'm joined by Emmett from Cubicle 7. How are you doing Emmett? Good, good. It's yeah, been an uh, exciting <laughs> few years for uh, you guys, hasn't it? Has, it has, yeah. It's our, our first major convention, I would say, in, uh, in, in three years, two, two years. Three years. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, our first one where we've actually had sold out on show, which is which is nice. Um, but yeah, loads of stuff. Finished the end of movie in campaign. Wrath of Glory has been released. Soulbound's been released. So yeah, it's been been a busy few years. Yeah. Has it been weird with these like Soulbound being a big release, kind of release during lockdown? How did you find that? Yeah, I mean, both with Soulbound and Wrath of Glory, they were kind of both released during lockdown. Uh, Wrath of Glory obviously has kind of pre-existing player base. So Soulbound being a brand new game, it, it was yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's still proved, proved to be hugely popular with a lot of people. Involved. Say, hey, this helped me get through the pandemic, which, yeah. is, which is really nice. Um, but it's, it's great to be here now for myself, personally, obviously, as one of the designers, um, actually be able to interact with people who are playing in the game and see the books on the table, which is nice. Absolutely. Uh, see physical copies. I guess some people might have thought that, you know, tabletop RPGs have died down, but with like Zoom and stuff, I guess it's yeah. kind of exploded, really, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. For ourselves, it was uh, one of the big things during. Um, during lockdown was we started releasing on Foundry personal tabletop, which just exploded. So it, it, it's a huge portion of it. the sales that go to the web store, the amount of people that play, like lots of people play online only. Uh, I've talked to a few people here who are struggling to get back to an in-person game. Yeah. Their friends are like, oh well, I have to mind the kids, so it seems to me to stay home and stuff like that, you know. So but no, it's, it's been great that people have been able to keep playing. It's been it's been new. Soulbound it's very easy to play. You don't really need a virtual tabletop, yeah. all you need is Zoom or Discord or whatever. With Wolfrop we have the Foundry and um, which will do a lot of the heavy lifting of the rules because it's a bit of a heavier system. Um, and then we have foundry support for Rapid Glory and Soulbound as well. So it's, it's really good. It's something that it's, it's great to keep supporting. We're kind of almost pushed into it, you know, out of necessity, but it's, it's become kind of a pillar for us now. Yeah. Company, yeah. So that's something you kind of like fell into during lockdown and then it fully embraced them. Yeah, yeah. There was um, one of the Wolfram fans that put together an absolutely incredible foundry one. So we. Uh, <laughs> to, to, to do the others and keep working, he's working through the Animal Rain campaign, he's done the Soulbound rules, the Wrath of Glory rules, but yeah, we've, we've rolled 20 sports as well, and a lot of our fans are on Foundry, so uh, we're kind of a little bit more support for that at the moment, more for Foundry in the future, or for Roll20 and stuff in the future as well. Amazing, cool. So let's talk Soulbound, I think it's like two years old now, I think last time we spoke to you, it was ahead of release, and how's, how's the whole kind of Soulbound gone down for the first Age of Sigma role-playing game? Yeah, it's gone down really well, and it was May, May two years ago we released the PDF, um, so it's in the top, it's been out for about a year and a half. Um, it's gone really well, you know, we've had constant releases, we've had the book, GM screen, starter set, Champions of Order, Champions of Death, Champions of Destruction, Steam and Steel, Artifacts of Power, you know, so we've had a lot. Uh, come out for it in the two years, so it's really well supported. It's a lot, really good community built up on Facebook and Discord and Reddit. Um, so it's, 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 yeah, people keep discovering it. We get people walking up from the Warhammer stand, like, hey, I didn't know this exists, or hey, the guys over there told me about this, yeah. you know? So um, it's been really great. Uh, the biggest trip for us, I think, was in the, uh, the announcement of third edition of Warhammer, yeah. uh, Age of Sigmar. They used one of our covers, so, oh, you know, like, it was the cover for Shadows of the Mist, and uh, yeah. I, I squealed when, <laughs> when I saw it, so no, it's, it's been great. And working with the guys who came to our shop, get to see what their plans are for the more rounds and, and how we can tie in that. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's been really good. Yeah, I guess, so are you a Warhammer fan yourself? Then? Yes, absolutely. I, I'm currently making a, a Cruel Boys army. Um, unfortunately, Dom, our CEO, is making a Stormcast Eternals army, <laughs> which means I'm going to get my ass handed to me. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Big fan now. It's, every book we work on, I become a fan of whatever we're working on. Yeah. You know, like when we're doing Champions of Dead, I was always a fan of Night Haunts and things, but it was really digging into um, all of them, really. You know, like the, the Soul Black Grave Lords and the new, the new batch, and you know, the Ossiarchs and the Flesh Eater Ports are, are ones I love as well. But then we worked on Champions of Destruction, got to really dig into the Cruel Boys, and it's just, they're so different from the, the regular you know, Warhammer works or Warhammer so, you know, they're just, yeah, I became a really, really big fan. So like, yeah, From a kind of writing point of view, it's been fun seeing stuff before everyone sees like the Mega Gargans, I think were in the mm. core, but the Fall of Anvil Guard we've had yeah, recently yeah. in the, the supplements. Yeah. I think that's just pretty exciting to see. Yeah, absolutely. And with, with the, um, our new book coming out, Year of the Beast, um, which we should be talking about later, is, you know, it's in Fondia where they have the, um, the new 
campaigns are set for the tabletop. So we've got to look at the autonomy of books and stuff like that and see where they're going and really have a good chat with Games Workshop on what's here, what's this over here, what's that there, and then uh, get their ideas on it. And yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been really cool. Like, to the, moving into the year of the beast with the emergence of Ragnos, you know, because even when we released the game, it was the Necroquake, it was a big thing. Yeah. Third edition came out, it was the year of the beast and the rise of Ragnos and everything like that. So that book will update the timeline a little bit for, for people who want to keep up to date yes. with, uh, with the, 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 the actual narrative we made. I mean, Age of Sigma is quite an unusual one in that it does have an advancing storyline. Yeah. I guess that really helps you guys out. Yeah, it's awesome, and uh, it's, it's it's really good for us. You know, it's we're always a little bit behind because of just how our schedules work. You know, like so, uh, you know, third edition was last year. Our year of the beast book will come out maybe in a few months, uh, so we're a little bit behind on that. But, but it's really great to have that to to follow along with. Uh, that, that's been really exciting for, for us. Uh, and with the old card as well, we're doing an old card box for for our book for our city. You know, like tiny little. It's really cool. We've been, we've been play testing it currently and it, it hits different. <laughs> okay. It's a bit like playing Warhammer Fantasy. In, really? In, in Bruce Soulbound, Soulbound. Soulbound. Yeah, like, oh, I'm dead. Okay, cool. Yeah, I guess it's different than Soulbound. You are, you are already the powered up hero when you start the yeah, campaign. Yeah. When things start killing you, things get a little bit scary yeah, in Soulbound. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, it's, it's been going down. It's been really, really great. There's a lot of exciting things on the horizon again. Yeah, tons. Uh, Era of the Beast is one we're working on now. Uh, should be out soon. Uh, Black and Earth, um, our campaign set in Grimwater Fast in Giran. That'll be out soon as well. Uh, after that, we'll work on Ruins of the Past, which is a nice little um, kind of dungeon book. It's like, what does the dungeon look like in the Mortal Realms? So we'll have like storm balls and living beings that you're like, you know, actually adventuring inside or whatever it is. You know, it's all the kind of crazy guns and stuff scattered across the realms that GMs can drop into their game. So that'll be really good. Then we have the awesome current book coming out as well. Um, and then some more stuff on the horizon that I don't think we've announced yet, so I won't say anything. <laughs> Super top secret stuff. Yes. So talking Warhammer Fantasy, obviously there's been the Enemy Within campaign for the last couple of years now. Yeah. Book four are you guys on now? Yeah, so book four, uh, Born Rat and Born Rat Companion are here at the show. Just arrived. Um, the Empire of Ruins, the, the final book, uh, is out with PDF and currently printing. So that should be out in a month or two, uh, two months I think actually, yeah. So we're looking to have it for JCon, which is August. Um, so yeah, so that'll be the campaign finished, you know, which has been a huge undertaking. It's a 10 book campaign, but I've looked at releases for for, Rat, uh, for Ruffrum in the last two years. I think we've had like 16 books come out, yeah. when, which you know, like, it's absolutely incredible output. You know, we've, Uber's Rock Adventures 1 and 2, and Altdorf, which is a 240 page city book, and Midnight, which is another yeah. city book, and then Archives of the Empire 1 and 2, and all of the uh, enemy, enemy within. So, yeah, it's been absolutely incredible. It's nice to have it done, yeah. you know, for the team, and, and move on to last year's new. So, we, some stuff coming out for that. We have Salzen Ones coming out soon, which is uh, another city book. It's, it's, it's a new city people have seen before. It's a bit of a gateway to the Empire, it's a fourth city. Okay. Um, so, after that, then we have um, Sea of Claws. Which connects to Salzman directly, oh, but nice. it's, it's a book about ships and boats and travel and everything like that. So I guess we've got story hooks in both of those links them together. Yeah, so very much opening up the, the world to people to leave the empire and go out beyond. And then after that, we'll be looking at Lustria. Oh, we'll see where we go beyond that yet. So, cool. that, yeah, <laughs> big, big excitement over that. So, yeah, we'll give, expand that a bit, we'll move it away from the empire a little bit. Still plenty of stuff in the empire, loads of more, but just letting people move out. So, yeah. Yeah. Is it nice to look at new, obviously, Enemy Within a, a historic campaign that you know loads of people have played. One of my favourite things about the, the Cubic Seven stuffs being the supplement books, where yeah, you've got the nostalgia hit, but then they've got hooks in there for okay, existing people have played this. How can we turn it on its yeah. head and give them something new to play through? Yeah, well, that's you know we've had even people at the show you know I played this like, 20 years ago, you know, but, so it's, it was really important for us to have those the Rognar boxes in there. Where you, here's how you change the campaign to be better. Yeah. That's been really great. I look forward to you know doing our own adventures. Well, for you know the guys have been heavily involved in it. The production team made it work with Ray Davis and uh, you know, a lot of well worked really hard on those books. Um, we're just looking at where we go now. It's, it's, it's exciting. We you know, we released um, PDFs for Open Arms recently, which is a, kind of just a, a player options book, a lot of martial characters. But again, even that has tons of lore on different night chapters and, and all that kind of stuff. Then. Wins of Magic just came out in PDF, which is all about magic and how you learn magic and different colleges and everything. So, yeah, lots of stuff planned. See, see, I play a wizard in, in one fancy roleplay, ends badly most of the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with that stuff. No, so, yeah. no. It's 
it's like playing a psyker in exactly. 40k. Yeah, you just exactly. don't. Yeah. Um, so you've also recently had the Electric Counts card game as well, which is yeah. a, a random one, be like an in-universe card game that you can play at home. Yeah, so the, the idea is it is it's an in-universe game that's played in the old world. Um, really nice game, it's like 30 minutes to half an hour to play. Uh, sorry, 30 minutes to two an hour to play. Pretty cutthroat, because you're playing as the Electric Counts and, and trying to try to take power. Um, two to four players, we're running demos here uh, for anyone who wants to go out and shop. It's like £25, it's a nice, nice little card game to, to sit down and spend some time playing, maybe before your before or after your World Cup game, or if, if players cancel and you, only a few be left and you don't want to get him or whatever. Yeah, whatever. We were, I seen in our review of it when um, you know, if you're a Warhammer tournament, it's a nice one to throw in your back and have a quick game over lunch between yeah. games or something. Yeah. It's yeah, really yeah. fun. Yeah. Any plans for anything kind of more like that, kind of spin off games? and? Yeah, hopefully, yeah. I mean, we've done in the past, you know, we've done Dr. Who card games and things like that. So, yeah, we're looking at what we can do next. Things some Warhammer, more Warhammer games, or some other stuff. It's, it's, it's something nice to move into and it's really helps. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice string for our I guess. You know, yeah. it's not that big. You get people that maybe aren't into RPGs, but they have to go with their games. So, yeah. The great thing about Electric Counts is it's been in the game for a couple of years and it's done really well. People are just glad to see the old world. You know? like, yeah, exactly. Like world, so, yeah. I take it you guys are looking forward to the old world being released from Games Workshop as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, Chopping up a bit for, for any information, but no, I mean, three fairly tight lips. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, no, that, that's going to be great as well. It's, it's, you know, people love it so much. I'm really excited to see what they do. Uh, oh, I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah. With the miniatures they can do now as well, there's going to be some insanely good stuff, isn't there? It's going to be so good. You know, it's going to be absolutely yeah. So finally, let's talk about the, the 40k system, Rack and Glory. How's that? Again, that's another one that launched during lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Um, how, how's the reaction been to that? It's gone really well. Do you know, the, the first edition was done by Ulysses, um, and then we took the license, and we kind of did a 1.5 edition of it. Um, so it made a, a few little changes, but for the most part, it's the same system. It's gone down really well. A huge fan base of 40k and 40k RPGs. It's done really well, so we've we put books here for that. We have the core book, we have a uh, Six assistant players guide, which is four player options, and then um, uh, just more information on the Gilead system where we're rapid is set. Uh, redacted records, which you can make from Space Hulk, and there's a few other bits in there as well. And then Lydia's Lost, which is an adventure that we've been playing. We should have the start set for Rapid Board coming out in a few weeks in PDF, so it won't actually be in print probably until January, February next year, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, no, there's plenty, plenty in the works for that. We know it's an Eldari book, all about the Eldari. So, uh, Threat Assessment Xenos. So we're kind of doing three B series. The threat Assessment Xenos is all about you know, Xenos and uh, the Threat Assessment Heretics and Abominations or something, you know, Chaos. Yeah. Chaos is something effectively, and then we might do Threat Assessment Imperium. If you're playing all Eldar and you want to fight, oh, nice, <laughs> fight the nice. Imperium or something like that, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So plenty of stuff in the works for Wrath of Glory as well. Yeah. So it's the big kind of release coming from Games Watch for the Horus Heresy. Mm. Any kind of would you want to do a heresy role playing game at some point in the future? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Who doesn't want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> Bite the hand on, I think. But, uh, no, that'd be great. It's, it's a really interesting one. It's, you know, it's one we spitball. Like, how would we do it? You know, would we use the 100 system? Would we use Wrath and Glory system? Yeah. Would we use the Soul Man system? Because you're probably going to be playing a lot of Space Marines yeah, fighting exactly. each other. Do you know, uh, would we just make it its own system? So, yeah. It's something that we've, we were like, oh, we're all big fans of Big Horus Heresy release today. We're stuck here on the booth and Dom is off buying the new, the new Horus Heresy. But, uh, but, uh, but no, look, it's something we'd love to do. We're all, I think we're all huge Warhammer fans of all the minds. So um, yeah, Horus Heresy, I think it'd be a, be a big one, I think, for, for a lot of the game. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to do something like that. Yeah. So if you're here all weekend at the UK Game, let's go. If anyone comes out to the stand, what's your like top three things that you can have a look at from the Cube of Seven stands? Um, I think the starter sets. So we have the Warhammer Fantasy and the Soul Band starter set. There's just so much in the boxes. You know, you get your pre-gens, you get dice, you get handouts, maps, you get an adventure book, you get a city guide. You know, they're absolutely grand with some, but it's they're only like £23, I think. Um, so they're just such a, amazing for what they are. You know, Electric Counts is great as well. We also have the beautiful Enemy within collector's editions, the Soulman collector's editions here and on offer as well, down to 80 pounds from 100, so yeah, yeah there's, there's tons. Yeah, there's plenty to offer, so, so for everyone as well. So, Amazing, yeah. cool. Well, before we let you go, there's a question we have to ask every single person we interview. What is your favourite sprue and what's your favourite brew? Brew, I'm fueled by coffee currently, coffee mostly. Excellent. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, 
like red wine. Okay, yeah, okay, classy. Like, big got into it over the. Uh, we had wines days, myself and my wife, <laughs> <laughs> during the week. Um, screw at the moment, I'm doing. I'm working on a lot of cruel boy stuff. Oh, nice. Um, I love the gut rippers, as silly as that sounds. Like they're, I know they're just a, they're like a ten year thing, but they're, they're all so different as well. Yeah, I, I, mean, I don't really get much love. They're quite sort of eighties and old school looking yeah. out there. Because I, I have the, the starter set box with the gut rippers, and I bought another box of gut rippers. But they're different from the starter set box. So you have like options as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at the moment, um, on my table, I have the killer boss on the gut I'm making the killer boss boss. I'm not making four tracks. I want to say. Uh, <laughs> trying to manage my points. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that would be it for me. Yeah, I just love, I love the, the cruel points. Pretty much any cruel points. Amazing. Yeah. So, thank you very much for joining yeah, us. Absolutely, it's been great. Um, it's really good to see you again. We'll look forward to seeing all the stuff coming from Keep It Yes, tons. <laughs> <laughs> We've got loads coming from the UK Games Expo, so we'll see you later.